Hi, I'm Peterson Goodwin from DIY Recording Equipment, and today we're going to talk about tools. Now, a lot of people assume that building your own audio equipment must require, you know, a full electronics lab or a workshop. It doesn't. You really only need two, two or three tools to get started, and you can get started for 50, an investment of 50 to 100 dollars in tools. Um, so let me talk about those main three tools first and then we'll get into some other stuff that I think is helpful but is not required. Okay, the first tool is a soldering iron. Now, soldering is the main activity of building your own gear. It's how we join components and circuit boards together. Uh, this gets hot and it melts metal, basically. Um, now you see this is a soldering station. Uh, the actual iron is plugged into this station here which has adjustable heat and a nice little stand. I highly recommend getting a station like this and not just um, what's called a pencil iron. It's just the iron. I started with a pencil iron. It was 20 bucks from Home Depot or something and I thought, oh, I'll just get started with this and then, you know, when I level up to a, um, a more complex kit, then I'll spring for something pretty nice. But I couldn't even finish this guitar pedal I wanted to build because the tips kept melting and I, I figured surely I'm doing something wrong. I'm the worst solderer ever. I'll, I'll never, I'll never hack it. Um, and then I borrowed my friend's station and I wasn't great at it, but it was, it was way better and I finished the project and I'm still using that pedal, you know, <clears throat> years later. Uh, so treat yourself to like a 35 to $100 soldering station. Don't get something that's so cheap that you're going to give up the hobby right away out of despair. Um, now we also need solder, of course. I recommend getting what's called 6040 rosin core solder. This is the old school lead solder that's really, I guess, bad for the environment and you definitely don't want to eat it. But man, is it nicer to work with than the newer lead free stuff. So if you're not you know, building these to uh, sell to other people or anything, I recommend going with the lead solder because it's much more forgiving, it's more dependable over time, it's cheap, and at least as of now, it's still available. So what you want is 64 rosin core solder, also called lead or tin solder. Now the last tool you absolutely need is a pair of wire cutters. This is how you remove the excess leads after you've soldered something so they don't uh, short together. And just make sure that it's something with a small tip like this so you can get into in between components. Uh, these are five bucks, not much to it. Um, also needle nose pliers, not strictly essential for every build, but uh, if, you, if you tend to be a little fumbly with your hands, it can be really helpful. Again, 10 bucks. Um, they're very useful. Now that's all you need to build most of the kits in our store. Uh, certainly all of our begin beginners kits you can build with just these tools. Um, however, I recommend getting some other tools in case, not in case, for when you mess up, uh, because we all do. And so why not hedge your bets and get something that will help you uh, make that less frustrating. So if you solder something you weren't supposed to have soldered or you put something in the wrong way, uh, you can remove solder with something like this. It's called a desoldering pump and you reheat the solder and then while it's hot, uh, you suck it out of the circuit board. So these are like two to five bucks, highly recommended. Alternatively, some people like a desoldering wick to do the same thing. I find for beginners, a desoldering pump is, is easier. A multimeter like this can also be invaluable if you're troubleshooting something that's uh, gone wrong. Uh, you could use the DC volts to measurement to make sure that power is coming in, or you could use the resistance measurement to make sure um, that there is uh, there are connections between between the points where there should be. Um, highly recommended. This is just a generic $15 cheapest multimeter you can get. That's all you need. Uh, you don't need a spring for something really nice. 
to troubleshoot uh, your first few builds. And that's it. Um, so you really, not much here. Uh, the three basic tools you can put together for anywhere between 50 and 100 bucks, depending on the quality you want. Um, if you add on these troubleshooting tools, I'd say, um, you know, you could still be well under 100 bucks and have a great setup for starting to build your own audio gear. And man, I mean, you build one, one 500 series preamp and you're already saving money uh, versus if you bought something pre-assembled. So that's all there is to it. Uh, please feel free to ask questions in the comments and I hope you found this uh, encouraging to get started building your own audio gear.